If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. All right, everybody, it's mind pump time. I'm still self-quarantined, so I am calling in through my phone to do this podcast with Adam and Justin. We are the top health and fitness podcast in the world, and this episode is a Q&A episode. We call it a quad episode. This is where we answer questions from listeners like you, but we tend to open the episode up by catching up with each other. Yeah. Uh, we talk about current events. We miss you, Sal. Oh, we have a lot of fun. So here's what went down in today's episode of Mind Pump. We start out by talking about shopping in the age of COVID-19. I talked about going to the grocery store and what an interesting experience that was. Uh, we talked about our friend Bedros from the fitness industry and how he's on Fox News and how we think he's going to bounce back uh, because the guy is a hard worker and an entrepreneur. Um, we talk about a company called LVHM and how they're shifting from perfumes to hand sanitizer, which is really, really cool. So are Tito's Beer, Anheuser-Busch, and Dogfish Head. All of them are making hand sanitizer. How cool is that? Then we talked about GM, Ford, and Tesla. They've pivoted to help build ventilators. Uh, what a wonderful example of uh, people coming together, working together to help each other out. Really, really cool. Adam brought up a website called unicast.com. It's an interactive scorecard where states and countries uh, are competing to see who's doing the best social distancing. They're actually using um, cell phone signals. So you can see mm. your area versus other areas. Who is doing the best at social distancing? Emo this kids were great, great at this forever. Yeah, this is a great uh, form of competition. So we really uh, you know, promote it. Um, then we talked about Viori, they are one of our sponsors. They make amazing athleisure wear. But right now, they're offering free at-home fitness classes, which we think is really, really cool. So if you want to go on to the Viori website, check out some of their workout classes, you can do that at Viori Clothing. That's V-U-O-R-I clothing.com. By the way, if you do that plus forward slash mind pump, you'll get 25% off all of their athleisure wear products. One of my favorite products from there is the Transit Jogger, a uh, great pair of sweatpants, very, very nice, and of course, extremely uh, comfortable. Then we talked about vitamin C and how uh, there, they actually might be a promising natural way to treat people with coronavirus. There's some, some reports coming out of New York that intravenous vitamin C seems to be helping people. Then we talked about a fitness influencer who has her own way of boosting immune system. It's semen. I think uh, then we talked about the Olympics. They are delayed until uh, 2021 and how NBC had sold like 90% of its inventory of commercials for $1.3 billion and they're going to have to eat it now uh, because the Olympics aren't going on this year. That's kind of sucks. But here's some good news. Crime rates dropping everywhere. Um, in San Jose alone, uh, violent crime is down 40% uh, because, uh, well, I there's no one around to, uh, to do a violent crime on, I guess. Um, pollution is also down. I looked at some pictures from Venice. Uh, the canals are clear. The water is clear and they're seeing dolphins in them for the first time. And I don't know how long, so that's kind of good news. Then I talked about blood type and the coronavirus. There's a, a, a initial study out of China. They need to do more studies on this, but the initial study shows that some blood types do better than others when contracting the COVID-19, uh, virus. Um, Adam and Justin talk about starting their day off with Keon Coffee. Look, uh, you're probably not going to your local Starbucks like you used to. Uh, you're, you're obviously stick, stuck at home. You can order Keon to your door, uh, but better yet, Keon is literally the best coffee, the best tasting coffee we've ever had. It's the smoothest, best tasting coffee we've ever tried. And you can actually go on their website, use the Mind Pump discount, get 20% off, and they deliver it to your door. You don't have to drive anywhere. You can do your social distancing, stay at home, and get better coffee than what you were getting before. Here's how you get that discount. Go to getkion.com. That's G-E-T-K-I-O-N.com forward slash mind pump. You'll get 20% off your first purchase. Then we talked about homeschooling 
our kids and how uh, it's probably driving a lot of parents crazy. I know my daughter's having a breakdown every single day uh, with what's going on right now. And then I talked about how Trump's approval rating actually went up. So uh, tr- the latest Gallup poll shows that Trump's approval ra- rating is at all time highs. Um, uh, and, you know, it's probably due to how people are perceiving the way he's handling this crisis. Then we got into answering the fitness questions. Okay. So that's about 44 minutes into the episode. The first question, this person says, look, you know, people are staying at home right now for an unknown amount of time. Should they change the nutrition to account for being more sedentary? So you may be wondering if you should adjust your nutrition because you're not moving as much. So we give some tips on how you can help prevent yourself from gaining lots of body fat and, you know, from keeping your health uh, in check. The next question, this person is asking about pyramid sets. In other words, uh, each successive set adding weight or with each successive set lowering the weight. So give you an example um, of one way of doing that. You know, if I'm squatting, I'd start off with 135, then I'd go up to 175, then up to 225 and so on versus starting with a heavy weight going down. So we talk about the benefits of either strategy. The next question this person wants to know if there's any real benefits to doing workouts in hot temperatures or higher temperatures. So are there any benefits to training in uncomfortable uh, temperatures, hot and cold? So we actually talk about both. And then the final question, this person has a family member who started exercising again, but they seem to be overdoing the cardio and not doing enough resistance training. And they want to know uh, strategies on how they can communicate to this person that Lifting weights is probably a more effective strategy. We talk about this all the time on the show, how lifting weights boost the metabolism and how having a faster metabolism just makes it easier to stay lean and fit in modern life. Um, Also, uh, this month we put MAPS Anywhere 50% off. Now, we hadn't initially planned on doing that. uh, And of course, uh, you know, the the COVID-19 thing happened. People are not able to go to their gyms. Gyms are closed or they're avoiding the gyms to try and stay away from people, which is a smart thing to do right now. But they still want to work out. Well, we created a program called Maps Anywhere that requires almost no equipment. I mean, you literally, all you need are bands, a broomstick, and a pull-up bar. That's it. Uh, Those three things alone, you can train your whole body in a very, very effective way. So the program includes video demos, workout blueprints, It takes all the guesswork out for you. You just log in, follow the workout for the day. It's expertly programmed. It's not just a bunch of exercises thrown together to make you sweat. We've been training people for 20 years. We designed an at-home workout program that is truly effective. That's really going to build muscle, really going to get you stronger. That's really going to help you burn body fat. Um, As effective as workouts that you've done in the gym. So because of what's going on right now, we put that program 50% off. There's five days left for this sale. It's going on till the end of the month. After that, we're going to reevaluate if we're going to continue the sale or not. So as of right now, you have five days to take advantage of the 50% off. Here's what you do if you want the discount. Go to mapswhite.com. That's M-A-P-S-W-H-I-T-E.com and use the code WHITE50. That's W-H-I-T-E-5-0, no space, for the discount. I'm going stir crazy over here, boys. Are you? Yeah, it's at that stir point. Stir huh? crazy. I can't, yeah. you know, to be honest, I, 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 it's going to be really interesting next week because this whole week has been really surreal for us, right? Like, it just feels like extended vacation. The only time that it, it ever registers is if we turn on the news or we go to the grocery store. Other than that, it, it just feels like we're up here vacationing. So, But if I was cooped up in my condo right now, I'd probably be going Ugh. nuts. Yeah. Oh, dude, because I'm not, I'm not seeing, you know, because I was sick, although I'm, I'm a lot better and I'll probably be fine by, I think Friday marks my, uh, you know, two weeks or whatever that they recommend. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll be good. But, um, you know, it's, it's two weeks of not seeing anybody at all not seeing anybody physically that i'm going crazy man i went to the grocery store today you know and i did the whole thing with the mask and the gloves and uh, have you guys been to the grocery store are you guys are, are, are people over there all all geared up or what uh i would say maybe 10 percent or 20 percent of yeah. people are like that it's, it's a pretty big percentage over here in well, uh, san jose i'd say the probably eight out of ten people have uh, a mask 
and gloves on hmm. um, at the grocery store. And I, you know, as I'm going through the grocery store, you know, you're thinking about all the, the, you know, the medical personnel and all those people that are, you know, at the front line and, you know, God bless them. You know, I, I, I'm so grateful for those people. But then you, you start to realize like, man, people who work in grocery stores, they're kind of on the front line too. And, you know, I don't know if any of them signed up for this when they first got the job. Oh, no. I mean, I've, there's okay, no way. Yeah, if you're, if you're uh, you know, a police officer, a medic, a nurse, a doctor, I mean, uh, you you sign up for that, right? You 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 are definitely you put yourself in harm's harm's way almost every single day of of your of your life as as one of those professions, right? So for them, and obviously it's uh, exaggerated now because of what's going on, but for them, it's that that's kind of what they signed up for. If you're a grocery store clerk, you don't ever this doesn't cross your mind that hey, one day it's going to be real scary or dangerous to go to work. Yeah. So yeah, you know, and not a lot of people are, are probably. Uh, giving them the love, you know, not uh, not to say that they're uh, more or as valuable as our nurses and doctors that are on the front line. But Jesus, man, if you're if you're somebody who's a you know single mother, you're working at a, a grocery store or a young kid trying to get through school, and 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 you and you need that that job to pay your bills, and and now you're out there with. And I would think the grocery stores are probably you know grocery stores and hospitals are probably the two most vulnerable places right now wouldn't you think well definitely hospitals because uh they're you, you know, know sick people are everybody going there. in the, yeah everybody in there sick and you're in close contact with them and you're just cuz they're showing that the, the 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 greatest odds of contracting uh the virus is if you're just around sick people in a room you know for a prolonged period of time like casual passing catching it from surfaces uh, at the store, you know, low, still a risk, still way more than people staying at home. Uh, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a lower risk. I was, uh, you know, because I went to the grocery store today, right. I, I, you know, I walk in and I'm, you know, start to realize like, wow, I feel really, uh, well, I feel bad for these people, but I also am so grateful for them. So every person that was working in the store, I went up to them and, you know, you know, kept my distance or whatever. They said, Hey, I really want to thank you for coming to work. You know, I, I really appreciate it. And they all just, they were so um, happy that I said something, you know, like this big smile and like, thank you. You know, they felt appreciated. So, you know, if, if you're listening and you're going to the grocery store, you know, let those people know um, that, you know, we appreciate them because they're doing a very important job and they're, you know, exposing themselves to lots of different people and money, you know, all day long. Well, it, it, it's interesting. You'd think now too, how much more aware they're going to be going forward. Like it's such a, a crazy job in general when you're collecting people's cash like all day long, and uh, you know, like whatever it is, if it's coupons or anything, and they're interacting with people like so closely like that. Uh, you know how easy it is to then pass on bacteria, you know, viruses, things like that. So I'm, I'm sure you'll see a lot of the practices now with the gloves and everything else, and washing your hands constantly and sanitizer and all that. Like that's going to be a lot more apparent. Dude, I had a, a a moment today too because you guys know, you know, I've talked about this on the show. Um, I can I have a tendency towards uh, being a bit of a germaphobe, anyway, right? So this yeah. is like a super. So for me, this is like. <laughs> <laughs> triggering the shit out of me it's right it's like apocalypse of it for you yeah. oh you- dude it's, it's hilarious so I, I have uh we have gloves here um at home because back when we had the the guinea pigs you know you're supposed to wear gloves when you clean the cage and all that stuff so we had this box of gloves so i'm putting them on when i go to the store or you know if i'm gonna get gas and touch the pump or whatever so i had a pair i had two pairs of gloves one pair for the grocery store then i go get gas and i have the second pair in the car so I go to put them on, and the fucking the the right one just splits in half. And I'm like, <laughs> no, oh, I'm you know? vulnerable. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, you know. So so yeah. there's all that's left of the glove is the parts that that are on. It's like barely up to my knuckles. It's just around my fingertips. Yeah. So I'm like holding the pump with just my fingertips and <laughs> squeezing the gas in there. And I'm like, this is the funniest thing yeah. ever. Did you see? Did you see that uh, last night they they passed the the bill, two trillion dollars? Whoo! Yeah, that's, that's insane. a lot of money. Isn't that crazy? Wow, that is that is a lot of uh, just money out of nowhere. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what what is that? What is I mean, n- never in history have we we seen this big of a bailout, have we? 
Have we ever? Have uh, we, what was the? What was 08? What do you know? What the the the, the dollar with, amount? With the banks. I for, I forgot what the initial bailout was, but when all was said and done, it was it was definitely trillions of dollars. Yeah, this is just the first one too. This won't be the last. This is just the first initial. So to come out with two trillion right out the gates, going to be really interesting to see what happens. Uh, because did you also see uh, Bedros on Fox News? I, I yeah, saw him Bedros. post about that. Yeah, what did he say? So he was just talking about. I mean, God, imagine him right now. Uh, and I know he didn't say this on the news. He was talking about his concern for all the the franchises. But I, I know that's the main source of his income is franchise fees and he's got over 600 locations that are all shut down so obviously if they can't keep their doors open and provide uh business and and pay their employees i can't imagine they pay their franchise fees either so right he's got to be uh probably i mean he kept his composure on on the fox news but you got to think that guy's got to be shitting himself right now he's got such a large uh, operation going, and I, I believe uh, a majority of it is dependent on on those franchises. Well, you know, this is the way I think about it uh, when it comes to, uh, and this I'm not trying to make light of it, by the way. This is a very challenging time for a lot of uh, businesses and people, and, and I feel for them, um, you know, but I think about it this way. It's like, you know, when you, you work out and you gain 10 pounds of muscle, and it's like solid muscle, right? And it takes you like a year and a half, two years, three years just to do it. You're grinding, you're working hard, you're pushing your body, and you finally gain your this initial 10 pounds of lean body mass. And then, you know, something happens, you, you, you fall off your skateboard, you get sick, uh, whatever, and you stop working out, and you lose that 10 pounds of muscle. And it goes fast, right? Anytime you've ever lost muscle, for, if anybody's ever stopped working out, you know how fast the body adapts uh, in the reverse. The body really quickly gets rid of uh, muscle it doesn't think it needs because it's expensive tissue. So it's always trying to become more efficient. But then when you go back to working out, that 10 pounds of muscle that initially took you two years to gain, you get back in like two months. Right. It's mm-hmm. muscle memory. It comes back super, super fast. And it makes me, it, it, you know, that reminds me, you know, I had a client years ago who was a very successful self-made uh like million like this guy was worth uh a lot a lot of money super hard-working guy very smart dude when i was training him he was i think 69 or 68 so he was in his late 60s uh self-educated dropped out of high school grew up on the east coast you know uh son of uh, irish immigrants and um i asked him you know once we started to build rapport I asked him, you know, what was the secret? Like, what, what, what could you tell me about success or whatever? And he says, the question you need to ask me is not that. He says, you need to ask me how many times I failed. And, you know, he told me about the three times he went bankrupt. The three times he went bankrupt. You know, there was the, the, the savings and loan crisis and this other crash and whatever. The guy made millions and lost millions three separate times. And he said, you know, uh, each time was, was easier than the first time because he'd done it before he built the skills to do it. And of course there's that barrier, you know, when you first do it, it's real hard when you go back to try it again, because you've been there before. So, you know, you got a guy like Bedros who, uh, built his business out of nothing and, Mm -hmm. you know, busted his ass. And I feel for the guy, I'm sure he's going to suffer, uh, from what's going on, but, uh, you know, that dude's been there before. He's been through it. He he had a partner he had to you know make uh you know part ways with and and had to restructure the whole thing before and you know so I I anticipate he's already like you know thinking of his next move uh, going forward but uh, getting out there to really you know show support of his franchisees I think is really big for his company right now I I, lo- I love your optimism dude <laughs> <laughs> I love how you just drew a, a an analogy from a muscle science perspective into the economy so economy I, memory dude yeah. you didn't know that's the thing yeah I like well, it no I like no it's I think I, it, I lean on salsa no no there's I think there there's a lot of value in what you just said I think you're I think for the most part um you know a lot of entrepreneurs will 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 def obviously will learn from this um you know, no matter how bad it's hurting them right now i i i, I want to believe too that most of them uh will come out of it and and be able to rebuild and learn from this i think i think all of us will 
Uh, I, I, you know, the people I'm really concerned about are the ones that are not entrepreneurs, right? It's the, it's the, yeah. it's the front desk kid, absolutely, who's you know, you know, strapped, paying rent and and paying for his car and, and makes you know twenty bucks an hour, and you know he has no job or she has no job, and you know they don't have an entrepreneur spirit or uh, bone in their body, and they they rely on on that business to to pay their bills, so that. Those are the people that I think are going to hurt the most in this. If you're if you're an entrepreneur and which and you've been successful like a Bedros, you're right. You've already failed twenty times in your life already. So uh, being struggling is not uh, new to you. So I don't I, I don't think people like that. Um, I mean, like we were quick to be already uh, thinking about what what we would do or what we need to do. All of us because we have that entrepreneur bone in all of our bodies but uh the people that i'm most uh fearful for are the ones that don't you know the ones that uh, were you know clock punching working for somebody else and relying on a company to take care of them that that's who's probably going to suffer the most in this situation i would think oh it's n- no doubt no doubt man it's gonna be tough i was i was dming uh with someone uh today and they were saying how they've you know pivoted to to doordash and to um I don't remember the name of the service, but you could buy your groceries and you could, you know, somebody will pick up your groceries for you and bring them to your door, which um, is actually in high demand right now. I tried to do that mm-hmm. here in San Jose and there was like the, the next available one was like a, like weeks from now. So it just shows me that there's a high demand for, especially for the elderly mm-hmm. and the immune compromise. Um, you know, they could really use people going out, getting them groceries bringing their groceries to their door, um, you know, ring the doorbell and leave type of deal. So there's, there's, there's ways you can pivot right now. And again, I'm not trying to make light of it, but um, you know, you, you got to think that way. And look, I, I tell you what, man, if I had to put my money on any country in the world uh, to rebound from any economic calamity, it's America. Oh no, yeah, yeah. for, for sure. You know, along those lines, I have to share some of the things that I was reading that I think is pretty cool. Uh, and I think inspiring, you know, we're talking about pivots, like, have you seen what a lot of these, like some of these big companies, like uh, LVHM, which is like a huge, uh, massive corporation? And I think like your uh, uh, Victoria's Secret and Louis Vuitton, a lot of those brands are underneath that that acronym. Uh, they're shifting over, and they, you know, perfumes is like the, one of their number one money maker. They've s- switched over to hand sanitizer. So oh, wow! So has uh, Tito's beer, Anheuser Busch, uh, uh, Dogfish Head, all making hand sanitizers. Hanes underwear. Uh, is now producing 1.5 million masks per week. Mm. Uh, wow. A swimwear startup called uh, Somersault is using its customer service channels to provide emotional support for people going through COVID-19. So, wow. yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of companies that are uh, seeing that GM, Ford, and Tesla are now producing ventilators for the hospitals. So you've got some of these companies. I think. I mean, th- this is yeah. what's awesome about America is that. You know, and those that are that are pro free market is you know there's obviously a huge demand for this. You have companies like GM, Ford, and Tesla, which obviously specialize in making cars, mm-hmm. but have the resources, the tools, the capital to pivot quickly and all of a sudden start producing ventilators. And so, you know, they're doing that now, and all those other companies I was talking about doing hand sanitizers. So. You know, it's kind of cool to see uh, all these companies coming together and finding ways to uh, provide these services. I love the innovation that's happening, too, like uh, around this and the hustle that a lot of uh, entrepreneurs are making. Uh, like I saw, too, I was reading about like MIT partnering up with Arduino, I think this like computer chip company to create like a 3D printed ventilator that, uh, you know, hospitals and even like in home, like you could, oh, you wow. could just make them yourself and like get them out in the public as quick as possible. So it's just, a, it's very like that. Those are the things I try to like, you know, seek out and, and look to see like who's who's really like doing things outside the box and really trying to uh you know make a difference right now have you guys seen have you seen the unicast.com right now too no what is that okay so unicast it's u-n-a-c-a-s-t.com uh it's really cool you can go on that website right now and they are using our cell phone signals to give uh your state and country ranking on uh, on a scale of a to f a being very good f being poor on how well you're doing in social distancing. Hmm. 
So, oh, wow. That's isn't that, brilliant. Isn't that that cool? brilliant. And it's, it's real time. So it's constantly being updated. So you can go on there right now and look at your state and you can see if uh, they're do, you're doing a good job or not at uh, social distancing and it's yeah. all color coordinated. So you can see the whole map and they have it for countries, everything. So that's, that's really kind of, cool. Right. And that fast. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that is absolutely brilliant. You know, it, it makes me so happy because all this stuff, all these companies that are helping in this website that's doing that, this is all voluntary. These are all people uh, coming forward and choosing to do these things. And, you know, one of the criticisms of free societies that I'm hearing right now is that they can't uh, stop the virus like China did because China has such a strong, you know, draconian uh, government. Right. I mean, they literally lock social people in their, scoring system and everything. Yeah. They, just oh, lock they, them down. they lock people in their houses. They were, there's videos of police beating people if they, if they left their homes. I mean, just, and, and some people are saying, Oh, that, you know, that's been, look at, here's the deal. We're, we're, uh, we're, we were born out of freedom and what we need to do is we need to show the world that we will freely choose mm-hmm. to distance ourselves from, from others. We need to freely choose to do the things that help each other so we can show everybody that there is no weakness uh, in freedom, that uh, freedom is best for everything, including uh, when we're, you know, faced with these these types of pandemics and, and, and challenges. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, speaking of that, too, we have come like some again, like love seeing a lot of the brands and stuff that we partner with. Uh, Viore is doing some really cool stuff right now where they're offering all these at home like yoga type classes and stuff that they're streaming online. So even you have a company like Viore, which specializes in athleisure wear. Um, that is trying to find ways to help you out. Obviously, they've shut all their their stores down. Now they're direct to consumers, so they can still sell products and provide that for people. Yeah. But then they're also finding ways to contribute uh, to our society by providing these at home workouts and yoga classes that people can tune in and, and and live stream for free. Which, you know, that's just it's so cool to see companies like that that are coming together to to provide service and and help us all out as a nation and that's just a testament to what you're saying right now yeah, that's, that's cool. great it's funny you bring them up though i was like just thinking about the limited amount of clothes we brought up because we were like <laughs> we just thought it was gonna be a few days you know and i'm like whatever i'll just bring some clothes and like thankfully i have like at least three like viori pants and like viori shirts and things uh to you know both we have the workout, we have like lounging and it's like, I, I'm very limited to that. So thankfully at least it's something comfortable to be, you know, lounging around oh, in no, and I'm, working out in. I'm rocking my Sunday joggers as we speak. So yeah, yeah no, I, I love their stuff. I mean, I, I feel like I can dress it up or down, you know, Adam, the, the gray, those gray ones, those gray sweats that we all like so much. Do you know what the names of the, of the, the of that one is the Viore gray ones? Uh, those are okay. So I got to remember the name of the, the uh, that Sunday joggers. What I have the most of, I, those are the ones that I just recently bought after seeing them on you. Uh, yeah. I'll have Doug pull them up yeah. and figure out what the name of those ones. Are. I really like those too, though. So those are I, the Sunday joggers are, are more fitted and I feel like I have more room to play in those. I, those are my favorite. Hey. But <laughs> yeah. little pocket billiards, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying, yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I just like ordered them. some uh, the the Ponto shorts. Uh, I, there was like a whole like fad a while back where there was like you know your sweats. They would kind of cut off your sweats, and then you'd wear those as shorts. And so those are a little bit more like thicker, and then they feel like comfy, uh, like like cut off sweats. So I, I I'm stoked to get those. Yeah, yeah, you guys ha- have fun and have fun playing in your sweats over there. Huh? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, man, yeah, I'll tell you what, it, it, some things don't change over here. <laughs> How you guys have been locked up together for too long? Yeah, right. yeah, no. Justin's looking cute. We're, we're switching yeah. uh, uh, clothes yeah. with each other. We gotta get creative, dude. Uh, hey, so so I got some. So I've been reading some interesting news. Uh, about the virus and about uh, what you know, natural things could potentially help. Have you guys <laughs> yeah, heard I got, about? Yeah, I got one for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, have you guys oh, heard about yeah. vitamin C? Oh uh, no, I thought you were going to go the semen route. <laughs> oh no 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 oh, no no. <laughs> Tell me, tell me, you saw that post, dude? That has to be uh, somebody trolling. That can't be. No, it's real. Wow. Yeah. No. What's her name? Uh, let me pull her up. Somebody sent it to me and I thought it was, uh, I, I didn't, I thought like Justin said it was trolling at first, but not at all. It's actually, it's a hundred percent true. This girl, uh, I think she's in the UK. Tracy kiss is her name. And she's got a, Sounds ma- like a real name. She's got a, a massive, uh, a massive following. She's got 400 something thousand followers. And I got tagged in this post 
where she's holding this. It looks like an ice tray, but like smaller little pockets. <laughs> and it's not ice that she's holding. It's, no, sir. Uh, it's frozen semen, and she is mm. promoting the the benefits of uh, the uh, immune boosting benefits behind semen, and Ooh. nobody talks about it because you semen sickles. You can't sell it and make money off of it, but uh, it's got uh, over two hundred vitamins and minerals in it. And uh, that she's been taking down the semen to help fight oh, COVID nineteen. Wow, wow. You this, know, is, this is a great like selling was, point. The, <laughs> she was at life. home. This is what this is what happened, right? She's at home, and she's like, uh, "How do I like? I love jizz. Like, I love it so much. <laughs> There's got to be some benefits to this, right? Yeah, how do I how do I legitimize that? How do I make this science? Because I just want to put ice cubes of you know jizz in my water and throw it on my face and. Right. I'm embarrassed, and and then this this whole coronavirus thing happened. She's like, ah, there's my opportunity. Yeah, it it's healthy. It's yeah. good for you, and there's and vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. Oh, I think there's. So, some, I think there. I think that it's a conspiracy. I think that there's men behind it. I don't think it's a chick. <laughs> I think it's some dudes. Man, some yeah. guys are like, I'm going to convince my chick right here that this oh, is yeah. the healthiest way for you to boost your immune system. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you want to stay healthy, honey? Some, some <laughs> fake <laughs> fake studies out there. So so tell me the real one. I, I thought you were going to allude. You were alluding so to vitamin the, C to the semen one. What's the vitamin C one? No, so uh, so vitamin C. Um, they're they're finding that uh, high doses of intravenous vitamin C seems to be helping. So there's this, there are these reports coming out that came out of China where they're saying that it made a big difference. And so this now this is happening in New York. So there's a, a, a doctor out there, critical care specialist um, over there on the East Coast, and he's giving people 1,500 milligrams of intravenous vitamin C right away and doing it, I think it's like three or four times a day. And apparently, this is his quote, um, the patients who received vitamin C did significantly better than those who did not uh, get vitamin C. So this is, it's interesting, it sounds weird, but this mm. is a real, doctors are saying that this may actually be a, a, a natural way to help the body fight this particular virus so i thought that was uh really interesting so, i don't know if oral vitamin c uh will do the same thing because they're talking about intravenous uh, vitamin c so i don't know if that means i was just gonna say uh, bj's and oj for BJ's, all the j's <laughs> yeah. yeah bj and oj oh. combo hey look out oh yeah that's good stuff <laughs> good stuff right there so, gross. so do you see uh olympics are delayed so those are uh, uh olympics are pushed out to 2021 now yeah, uh, one point three billion dollars NBC had uh, sold of inventory for commercials, and you just got to eat that. Wow, I know that's so they're crazy. just they're just hoping that they collect that next year and they can make up for it. Yeah, I mean, I imagine, but I mean, think about that when you as a business. I mean, you, we do the same thing when we 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 decide to spend on something or invest in something in the company. You forecast like, oh, well, we should make X amount of dollars off of that conservatively, mm -hmm. so we can go ahead and spend this much money and we'll be completely fine. So I can't imagine when you uh, you forecast for one point three billion dollars coming in uh and then that's even if you're still going to potentially get it a year later what that could do to them too i mean that's going to be crazy in itself right yep yep now I, now, I, now I'm, i got some some other good news uh so we can go back and forth with you know bad news yeah you, news. Give, you give the good bad so news, I'll give, good news i'll give all the bad good cop news. bad cop so uh the mercury news reported uh mercury news is a, a san jose uh publication and it reported that the city's violent crime rate declined by 46%. And there's uh, reports from other cities apparently saying the same thing, that uh, that their violent crime rates are going down very low because, you know, obviously people aren't going out <laughs> and seeing each other. So that's yeah. kind of good news, right? Me hey. are Meanwhile, domestic abuse is up by 35%. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> no, have you seen all the memes? Happy, <laughs> yeah, sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Have you seen all the memes of like you know seven days of quarantine with your your spouse or your partner, and it's like two cats that are at each yeah, other, yeah, it's like a stalemate now, yeah, trying to attack each other. Oh, just yeah, just getting on each other's nerves. You know that <laughs> happens when you're stuck around the same person and you're stressed out. That's going to happen. Yeah, you're just going to be irritated with each other. More good news: uh, dramatically reduced levels of pollution. Um, oh, uh, wow. air pollution. Yeah, of course. And, 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 yeah. Did you see the, the, the images from Venice? Oh, it's drastic, um, dude. Is it oh, really? the, the, 
the water's clear. Yeah. The water's clear it's like for the first never time. Never been in clear. Time. Yeah. Really? No, and dolphins. They see dolphins in the water. What? That never happens. Wow. Yeah. Just that's crazy. Just from like a week of everybody kind of shutting it down. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And massive reduction because I mean, you know, we so much pollution is created every single day from people just, you know, going about their their business. Wow. That- Did we just solve global warming? <laughs> yeah, right. Oh my god! Have Don't you seen Have you seen that post that uh, I like that one too? That's going around right now. I feel like uh, the Earth has put us sent us all to our room to go to, to think about what we've done. <laughs> that's what we're, this, we're all in a timeout. Yeah, yeah this is like a, a worldwide environmental impact timeout. And think about what you did. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's funny. Um, hey, hey, do you guys know what your blood type is? Do you guys know if, if you guys are like A A B? Oh, I forget what I am. Yeah, I totally. That's so bad. That's right? something you know. should know. I know, right? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. been, it's been a minute. Well, okay, so I'm like ABC, uh, something like that. Yeah. Well, so this is interesting too. This is kind of interesting. There was a recent study uh, from China that concluded that people with type A blood have a higher risk of contracting the coronavirus than people with type O. Hmm. Apparently, people, according to their recent study and and experts are saying that that more studies need to be done to verify the results so you want to kind of yeah, take this with a grain of salt that sounds fishy but, to me right well you know uh, i mean people, we, we have what four blood types is that right four i think so yeah so you have four blood types and you know you've got a hundred thousand people that have now contracted and you just take it out and go oh more type a therefore they're more likely. I mean, that's kind of a weird. Like, how? What? 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 What's the science saying to support that? Or is it just their typo stati- is the one that's compatible <clears throat> with all of them? Or right? they? Just, I mean, or are they just? Yeah. Or are they just statistically, you know, breaking that down and saying that? Oh, based off of the people that have got it, it seems that type A is more likely to get it because that's kind of well. Weird. That's so, weak science. Hmm. So it's not that crazy to, to to say. Now I don't know. Again, this is one study, so they have to confirm this. But blood type, there are certain blood types that do better with certain uh, diseases, like malaria, for example. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, type O also does exceptionally well in comparison to other blood types with malaria. And there are other, uh, you know, like uh, illnesses like the stomach flu. Um, There's, you know, risks of stroke and cognitive impairment that are different depending on uh, the blood types. So uh, based on this preliminary study... Uh, type A is the worst, and type O um, is the best. Again, you know, want, take it with a grain of salt. I so. wonder how that if that how that varies too for someone like Justin, who's got uh, basically coffee running through his bloodstream. Yeah. That's all he's got. I don't think he has very much type anything. <laughs> type nitro neg- yeah. negative. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's been. I'm glad I brought like 40 bags of coffee up here because I didn't realize how much this guy sucks down when we don't see him. Hey the man, day. my my favorite part of the the morning is waking up and then I'm going out and grabbing my cup and I'm going to sit and watch. Actually, we have a lot of snowfall right now, Sal. You'd be totally jealous. Like just watch out the window drinking my first cup of coffee and what like i've been putting some creamer in the i don't know whatever brews we've brought a, a bunch of different brews but then we kind of converted over to keon i really enjoy the keon. yeah i was gonna ask you how do you so i i mean i've been drinking it for a long time now i mean before we got sponsored by keon i had been bugging uh ben for a long time because it's by far my favorite, and I've been drinking it for a long time. And I know that the the margins weren't great on them, so the money that they can spend on advertising is very minimal. And so, mm. you know, it took us a long time before we could finally get them to work out some sort of a deal. Because I was like, dude, we have to. We have so many people that I know that drink coffee. They ask us for recommendations all the time, and so finally we nailed that down with him. And I'm so yeah. excited because and you know how meticulous Ben is about sourcing and all that kind of stuff, and like how the like the purity of this product, like it's it's you can definitely taste the difference in it for sure. It's, well, it's, it's it's a nice clean buzz. It's the first organic coffee that I really really like. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. and I, I I remember when we had a, a different sponsorship when we first started the podcast, and when you know it was cool because it had. Uh, you know, new tropics that were infused into it, which that was cool as far as how you felt from it. But I was never really a fan of how well it tasted. And so I was on the search for yeah. a, a, something a, that tasted yeah, like, delightful. A, yeah, a brand yeah. that was that was not only a pure source, but then also actually tasted really good. And I freaking love that. I, I love Keon. And I know that, uh, I didn't know if Justin had been drinking it as much as I had, but I brought a bunch of bags. Yeah, no, there. this is like, uh, I mean, I, we we... They have like a new uh, blend that they, that they they're promoting, and so we brought that up. And that one, I actually, I prefer that one over the other one. So, oh, it's so yeah, cool. it's even better. Coffee, by the way, um, so long as you can tolerate caffeine, is actually one of the 
healthiest it's like a tea you know it's one of the healthiest things uh, you can drink I, I think a lot of people know that now but yeah. how would you guys describe the 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 flavor of Keon because it's to me it tastes uh far smoother yeah, it smooth, doesn't smooth, have, smooth and rich yeah 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 it's, it's got it's a really nice like aroma you, too so like when you brew a lot of times you'll be able to smell like how good it's going to taste yes. as you walk in the room it like emanates the whole room is with this aroma it's that's really, like the first test yeah. for me is like does it does it smell amazing when it you smells s- great. squeeze the bag and then when you brew it and yeah, so our house has been our house has been smelling like Keon, <laughs> <laughs> like crazy, dude. That's how I operate, dude. We're stuck in this like house the whole time. Like I need some, you know, some some motivation, and so it's been helping out for sure. But you're right, though. I'm I'm with you, Justin. Like it's uh, honestly like uh, I mean, first thing Max is up by about six thirty in the morning, so I'm up early. Katrina normally passes him over to me right away, and he's waking up, jumping on my stomach and stuff like that, yeah. and slapping me in the face. And then she goes out and brews uh, the first the first pot of coffee, and so sitting there with him, holding him, look at watching the snow fall and drinking yeah, it's all epic, the coffee. Dude. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, and I need it too because my kids are doing the at home studying, and so they have all this like classwork that they need to accomplish and so like uh, ethan's asking me all these like geometry and math questions i'm like oh my god i'm not ready for this <laughs> like i need some more coffee dude yeah it's brutal how are the kids doing with their schoolwork because like my daughter has a meltdown oh, every day yeah it's it, it i mean it really is one of those things that uh it you know, like now Courtney has to become the, the the sole teacher for them and try and keep them on task. And it's like there's so many distractions and it's such a new thing where uh, it, it just feels like they're at home or they're on vacation. And so they're just like completely not motivated to do it. But they're starting to come around. I think now that we've created sort of a routine with it, that was that was really big. And uh, also jumping on these virtual classes with some of their other friends uh, has helped a lot, too. So do talk about having uh empathy and compassion for jobs and people. I feel for the stay-at-home parent right now that is also trying to work virtually and right. then also take their kids through schooling. Like, yeah, that's, I mean, lucky for Justin, Courtney is, you know, a stay-at-home mom this last year. And so, you know, she can dedicate her time to doing that. And it's already a pain in the ass and stressful for her. Oh, um, I'm very fortunate. Uh, for imagine that. the single mother or even the parents that are both, you know, working from home right now while all this stress is going on. And then on top of that, you're re- responsible for taking your kid through school. It gives you a whole new, uh, uh, compassion for, for teachers. Right. And, and just forget, <laughs> forget how important they are. As, as you're saying that, right. So, you know, I've been, I haven't been around my kids for a couple of weeks because I, you know, again, I'm, I'm trying to self quarantine, so both of my kids are with their mom. She's by herself. She's working from home. And she's as literally as we're doing this podcast, she's sending me texts and she's saying, it's been long enough. Come pick her up right now. I can't take her. <laughs> <laughs> she's got like a, a ticking <laughs> clock going. <laughs> yeah. See, so she, she's working from home then see, I mean, God, bro. Yeah. Just so, I mean, obviously I don't need to tell you, you're a very self-aware person, but have some patience with the ex because if she's working from home and she's having to help those kids through school right now, uh, just watching uh, Justin's kids and Courtney, I'm like, Oh wow. I just, I I, being, being someone who's got a, a, just a young kid who's not in school yet. My mind didn't even go that place that, uh, you know, when this all happened and all the kids are now at home that now there's, but yet still trying to go through their schoolwork. What a, how much change that has to be yeah. for a parent who's used to sending them off to school while they can buckle down and work. It's got to be a, a nightmare for a lot of people. Oh, totally. And uh, to change gears, uh, you know how we've been kind of speculating uh, whether or not this, this, uh, you know, what's going on is going to help or hurt, you know, because this is an election year. So, you know, help or hurt Trump or, you know, the Democrats, what, you know, what, what is the public going to think of how it's being handled and all that stuff? Well, mm-hmm. they just did uh, a Gallup poll and uh, Trump has received his highest rating yet. He went up five points. Oh, um, wow. Really? Wow. Yeah. And, and I, I was, you know, like I said before, when there's, uh, you know, like a, something crazy that's happening, people tend to want to rally behind uh, their their leader. It's just it's just human psychology. I remember ha- this happening with Bush, where everybody hated him, and then September 11th happened, and everybody loved him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Trump's uh, approval ratings are are doing better than ever. Um, you know, I think because of this, because of what's happening, and the in, in you know the way people are perceiving 
the way he's handling it. So it's going to be it's going to be an interesting election, um, you know, to kind of see so, how how this affects so it all. Based off of that, do you, do, I mean, do you feel pretty confident that he's they're going to reelect him? Because I don't know. I, maybe that's because uh my i have my best friend uh is uh liberal and so i'm getting all of his stuff every day right like if i'm not watching the news he's constantly feeding and he's feeding me all the all the political stuff that's like bashing trump and and the the job he's done during this whole this whole time and it's uh it seems from his perspective that he doesn't have a chance in hell of of being reelected what's your thoughts on that yeah no the 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 odds are so low that that we would um unseat uh, a sitting president because you know he's up for re-election so it's like it's like boxing you got to knock the the champ out um right uh it's it, the odds are so low that that would happen during a scary you know time like now like right now i i just i don't see it happening i just i i don't care who you like who you don't like Right. Um, well, I just, beating him is gonna be hard. Yeah, I just look at that as as human psychology, like you said. Like it's it's more scary to completely change everything. Instead, like right now, like people like the homeostasis. They 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 want to feel uh, safe, secure. Like that's the utmost importance right now. And so, uh, having everything sort of normalized, I think, will be subconsciously in their mind and their decision process. So, I think that he has probably a, a greater chance of. of I Getting I feel like it's still so early to tell because you know, right as of right now, if if we can if we can slow down the curve and and we can keep uh, the total death toll down in in the United States and the total uh, contracted right, I think uh, he'll and and then rebound from the economy. I think he has a, an incredible chance, and there's no doubt that that we won't unseat him, but. If uh, those numbers continue to rise and like what some uh, doom and gloom people believe that we're still on pace to be like Italy uh, and we don't know what the economical uh, ramifications are going to be in the next, you know, two to three months. I mean, if if it goes that direction, I don't know, man, I, I, it'd be it'd be if it gets worse, uh, if the stock market continues to go down, if the real estate starts to go down, if we if we are in a worse situation than when he got into presidency. Uh, I don't know, man. Do you do you still feel that way, even if it goes that direction? Or? Well, again, it's like I said, it's uh, human psychology. When everything's scary, everything's uncertain. You want familiarity. You don't want uh, something new. And and you know that would be electing someone other than him would be something new. And I just see people not wanting to do that, if, especially if it gets crazy and it gets mm -hmm. scary. And stuff's happening and he's up and he's talking and he's like talking about what he's trying to do and how we can stick together. People tend to rally behind uh, leaders when shit gets that way. And so I just don't I don't. And not only that, but imagine like, you know, because there's a lot of strategies with politics and how are we going to, you know, make the person look bad. Or, that stuff's not going to make the top of the news right now. I don't know how it's going. You know, what are they going to do? They're going to talk about you know, uh, some other scandal or whatever. That's going to uh, yeah, be like right. page two. The mud slinging. You know? Yeah. That's not going to be real apparent. I wouldn't think with all this. No, I, I, all, every, all anybody cares about is number one, uh, are people getting infected? How many people are dying? And then number two, uh, the economy, nobody cares about anything else. No, no, that's a, that's a good point. I, I saw you last night, uh, policing our forum. I saw the, the the political mudslinging that was going on a little bit there. I know that uh, that drives you crazy when you see the the, the negativity uh, in a time like this. It's just the wrong time, you know. It's it's not a good time to sit here and talk about, you know, like you know, I can't wait till this is over so we can talk about how dumb the Republicans are, or how bad the you know Democrats. Like, come on, guys, calm down. Yeah, this is a this is a bit of an uncertain time for everybody. I know everybody's annoyed and everybody's stressed out and anxious. Let's just focus on like positive. Right. If there was ever a time, if there was ever a time for us to unite, you know, forget your 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 political party you stand behind. I mean, if there was ever a time that you put that shit aside and we come together, I mean, I would think that this is the time now. So, no, I totally I get where you're coming from. I saw you I saw you getting into the guys that were that were posting shit like that on on the forum, and I agree with you. I think that you know, I think it's pretty, and that's the same conversation I'm having with my my best friend who. <laughs> 
sends over stuff like that. I'm like, really right now? Like you're, we're going to nitpick all these things and try and, and make, uh, the president, I don't care who the president is. I don't care if he's Democrat, li- uh, libertarian, r- Republican. It doesn't fucking matter to me right now. He's the president right now. And I'm rooting for him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I, I, I want him to, to figure this out. And I, and I'm, I'm hoping that we win this battle and I don't give a shit who's right or wrong in it. I don't care if you predicted this or not, or you, whatever, where you stand on it. If, if there was ever a time that we all came together and agreed on something, I would say that's now, you know? Totally. 100%. Quick call. Angle has landed. Maps Today's Quad is brought to you by Maps Anabolic. If you're looking to maximize your overall muscle and strength, Maps Anabolic is the perfect place to start. With a full 30-day money-back guarantee, there is absolutely zero risk. So what are you waiting for? Go to mindpumpmedia.com and get started today. It's the motherfucking qua. The eagle has landed. Quee-qua. First question is from Swole and Hole. <laughs> Since people are staying home for an unknown amount of time, should they change their nutrition to account for being much more sedentary? No, that's a good question. This is a yeah, re- very good, very good question. Um, I, I've actually had a lot of DM people asking me about their about their nutrition. You know, in the in the past, we've talked a lot about realizing all the different values uh, of food, mm-hmm. um, and one of them is the nutritional value, the actual physiological value that you get from food. But there's also the the social value. There's the emotional value. Um, and I would say, you know, before we talk about kind of what we think is a, is a good idea, you know, be, be more gentle with yourself right now. You're, you're probably more likely to, you know, eat comfort food mm-hmm. and to snack because, you know, you're, you're stressed out, you're at home, you're anxious. There's, you know, afraid of the or unknown. Bored. So, yeah. yeah. So just be cool with yourself. That's, that's the place that I would start. But as far as your, your calories and your nutrition are concerned, I would typically say, yeah. I mean, if you're not moving as much, you probably shouldn't eat as much. And in my experience, and this can be different from person to person, but in my experience, the easiest way to do this is typically to reduce carbohydrate intake. It's, uh, hmm. it, you know, carbohydrates are, you know, they turn into a really fast, quick, you know, uh, source of energy. Um, they don't tend to be as satiating as protein and fats. It, personally, and speaking for most of the clients that I've trained, uh, people are more likely to um, overeat and just mindlessly eat with carbohydrates. So I'd say, you know, if you're less active and sedentary, more sedentary than you normally are, um, and, you know, you, you probably do want to reduce your calories. And in my experience, people tend to have a better, uh, an easier time with cutting calories through cutting carbohydrates than through cutting, you know, fats and proteins. Well, this is this is an example, too, of why I'm always talking about the benefits of trackers and being able to know uh, what a normal day looks like and then an abnormal day looks like of movement and activity. I find that extremely valuable. Uh, anyways, I find it in now more important than ever, because if you were somebody who was, you know, quote unquote, intuitively eating before this all happened and you, you weren't aware on how many steps or approximately how many calories you burn on a normal day, and then now you're home, you're really kind of just guessing like, oh, I think I'm more, I'm pretty sure I'm more, but how much more sedentary? Now, myself, I know that on a typical day, uh, I'm, I move 8,000 to 12,000 steps, and that's including my exercise on an exercise day. On a day that I'm not exercising, uh, it's even lower. And I know that there's been days since we've been here that I I could easily get under a thousand steps. I mean, we're that sedentary. So that's a significant difference. And if I don't reduce my calories by a good 30 percent or more, uh, I will absolutely start to to pile on the body fat. Now, I I think that what you said about carbohydrates is a very intelligent uh, strategy for most people that, that, that are unaware and are now in this situation. But I, I think this really highlights why that's important as a baseline to figure out and know what a, what a normal day of, of movement looks like. So when the situation – now, mind you, this is an unbelievably rare situation for everybody right now. 
but I, I also think that this is where the value of those those trackers come from. Like, it's not about how accurate they are. Oh, it's ninety five percent or eighty seven percent accurate to the calorie. No, that yeah, shit doesn't need matter. A baseline exactly. You just need an idea of okay, when I am a normal day of work and a, a workout week for me, I'm burning X amount of calories or X amount of steps, and now that I'm in a situation like this, I can kind of mathematically figure that out that, okay, I'm moving 50% less than what I would be if I was uh, working on a, in a normal work week. Therefore, I know I need to reduce significantly or else I'm going to probably start piling on the body fat really, really quick. So uh, this is definitely a time when I am I would be recommending to most of my clients. And I, I, I wouldn't recommend somebody, like I don't I don't think it's a time for you to be trying to hit a uh, a significant calorie uh, reduction and as far as what your your BMR would be like being trying to lose body fat or lose weight right now I think everybody should be fed and and at least at maintenance right. or, or a little above but you know it does it won't take much to be a, a little bit of above your calorie intake right now considering that most of us are probably you know 70 percent uh, uh, less active than what we'd normally be yeah it'd be cool like I'd I gave my Apple Watch to, to Courtney, and so it's been really helpful for her to track just daily movement and how that's shifted um, being confined to the house the whole time. And just to be able to, like you said, find out that range and to, to more closely uh, match that. So it's like a more on, on the maintenance right now, I think, is that was definitely her goal. And that's something that, you know, I keep into account. Like if I'm moving less, I'm definitely adjusting uh, the amount of calories I'm intaking. And of course, it really does help uh, adding a bit more fat and protein versus carbs uh, in, in terms of feeling the satiation of it. And then, you know, not not feeling like the later cravings that result as, as I up my uh uh, my my uh, Fat, fats and proteins yeah. and veggies like that's I mean I, that's why I like the advice that Sal went with like I think this is a if you're somebody who you know typically could eat you know three four hundred grams of carbs and and not put on body fat uh, this would be a great time for you to shift over to a a lower carbohydrate diet and a higher fat or and moderate type of protein diet um, to help uh, mitigate how much. Uh, you consume because real easy you could snack man you got to be careful that's what you got to watch out for you got to watch out for grabbing things like chips and and where calories you know, and you know uh, drinks, drinks that have calories definitely yeah those type of things will sneak up on you really I fast. know alcohol is definitely you know I'm not alone in this when you're like confined to your house and stress and everything else uh, sounds like a good idea just you know catch yourself a bit to uh, uh, you don't notice the trends, an upward trend. Well, of, I'll tell you uh, what we've been doing over here, and you know, I've, Justin and I, have, we've had, you know, we've had things that are dessert. The the wives have made dessert some nights. We've we do have uh, wine here. We do have uh, Bailey's, which I love with my coffee. And the way that we kind of decide, and we're also, you know, you you bring up great points of you know feeding the soul and enjoying each other's company. And so we're not like, oh, mm -hmm. can't have any of this. But I, I'm very mindful of a good workout day and a good hike day. Like we've, right. we've had some days where Katrina and I go on a walk for like an hour. And then on top of that, I also Dude, I've been out. playing with the kids outside in the snow yeah. for hours and like trucking through like like a couple feet of snow. It's really exhausting. And so it's like I, the activity levels for me have still been pretty high, like actually. But uh, yeah, I've definitely like noticing if there are, has been some days we've just been locked in and just stayed in the house. And those day. are the days so. that. We uh we, we lower avoid, it down. Yeah, we avoid all those things. You know, I I know uh, I passed on it the other day. I can't remember what it was that I think Courtney made or Justin had and offered it to me. And I said, hey, not, not today. I'll pass. Today was like a, a uh, Pazuki. It was Ethan's birthday. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have I, which I would love to have. I love you know me. I love ice cream and it, it's uh, they made him a Pazuki dessert and I didn't have any of it. Uh, just because that day uh, was probably one of the lowest activity days that I had. So I think it's really just about being mindful right now, right? And and knowing uh, it, how, how much less you're moving in comparison. And on those days, you probably need to be tighter uh, or skip a meal or reduce carbohydrate intake, like you said. And then if you do good and you have a great workout or two in a day and then you go for a nice long hike, I mean, th that's the day to probably sit down and enjoy a glass of wine with your spouse or someone else. So I, I think the the answer to the question is, for the most part, I think most people should probably reduce uh, because of the activity level, uh, but just be mindful. Be mindful totally. of, of what you're doing. 
Totally. And, 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 you know, uh, this is a strategy that I recommend, um, you know, all the time, regardless of, uh, you know, whether you're stuck at home or not is, you know, be wary of the heavily processed foods. They do yeah, encourage yeah. you to eat more. You know, you mentioned potato chips, a bag of Lay's potato chips has something like seven potatoes in there. And I could crush hmm. a bag of, of Lay's potato chips easy. I could do that in 30 minutes. But, you know, I, w I don't think I could eat more than three baked potatoes in one sitting because the heavily processed version, it just it, it overcomes my my satiety. It, it, it tricks my brain and I eat more of it. So if you avoid the heavily processed stuff, you're far less likely just naturally, behaviorally speaking, you're just far less likely to overeat uh, when you're eating the whole natural foods. Next question is from Trey Hayer. When it comes to compound movements, I tend to increase the weight during the progression of my sets. But during isolation exercises, I tend to decrease the weight. What are the advantages of increasing or decreasing weight? And how can I know when it's most advantageous to do one or the other? There's not a huge difference between the two other than feel. And so I'll, we'll start with increasing the weight. Um, I think the main advantage with starting a set, so let's say I'm going to do barbell squats um you know and let's say my first set is with uh 225 and then my second set is with 275 and then my third set is with 315 you just keep ramping then, it up slowly yeah yeah and now what's the benefit of that the benefit is i'm getting used to the weight and i'm warming my body up as i'm doing each of my sets so that the last set is the heaviest one i'm the most warmed up i'm the most you know uh in the groove i feel the best with my form and the most tight so that's that's the benefit of doing it that way. Now, as far as dropping the weight, well, when you're dropping the weight, you can change the, the focus of the sets. So if I'm squatting 315, um, and let's say that's a heavy weight for me, let's say that's a really heavy weight for me, and I'm squatting with it, my focus with heavy weight is very much about being tight, being connected, and using the, the, boat, the best biomechanics possible to lift the weight in the most advantageous way possible. Now, when I go down in weight, you know, if I go down to 225, 315 may be, you know, heavy. That means 225 is obviously a lot easier for me. My focus is a little bit different. Now what I'm doing when I'm squatting with the 225 is I'm not trying to keep everything tight and maximize my leverage. I'm focusing on the muscles that I want to feel. I'm mm -hmm. trying to feel the exercise more. I'm trying to have more of a mind to muscle connection, more of a bodybuilding feel with the lift than say a, a powerlifting feel with the lift. You know, when you're, when you're going with lighter weight, you're the goal should be to make it feel heavier. Mm -hmm. When you're going with really heavy weight, the goal is to be, make it feel lighter. I know that sounds kind of weird and, and yeah. contradictory, but it's, it's actually the strategy. You know, when powerlifters are, are training in, in a high weight, low rep range, when they're training, you know, 90% of their max, they're trying to make the weight feel as light as possible through their technique, through their biomechanics, the positioning, how tight they are, all that stuff. Yeah. When a bodybuilder is lifting a light weight to work their biceps or their shoulders or their back, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make the light weight feel as heavy as possible. So it's all about the feel. Lightweight, make it feel heavy. Mm -hmm. Heavyweight, try to make it feel light. But as far as ramping weight up and ramping weight down um are there any inherent advantages to one over the other i mean if you always do one you're probably yeah. going to get benefits from two, trying two to different do stimuluses one. yeah two different ap approaches that you could use and i honestly i find myself uh definitely like applying that same strategy just because like if i'm loading more co uh, compound movements i tend to want to load a lot more weight it's more substantial amount of weight and so to get my bearings with that a lot of times it's just it feels more natural for me to try and ramp myself up to you know peak with with the, you know the maximal amount of weight i'm going to do in that set and so like i do find myself applying that uh, strategy a lot more with with compound exercises versus to the isolation exercises. Uh, it does feel.
feel a bit more natural to start, a bit heavy, and then I'm going to and keep going on the reps. You just get to that fatigue point where, uh, you know, if, if you do lower five, ten increments, uh, you can still accomplish if you're just focused on, you know, repping it out and the feel of it and getting the pump of it. Next question is from Kelly5724. Are there real benefits to doing workouts in higher temperatures or heated areas? I'm curious if there are more benefits than just sweating to make weight for sports. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is very similar to what we talk about when it comes to the benefits of like hot, cold plunges. Mm. Um, I mean, just uh, training your system. I mean, yeah, getting acclimated. There's, I think we, we always talk about the, the muscular system, right? I mean, that's we, we're always talking about that and how we, we train and adapt to that. But not a lot of people talk about the benefits of being able to adapt to different temperatures. Mm -hmm. And there's been a lot of research to, to support uh, how much that can help support you when fighting off a, a cold or a virus. So the ability for you to uh, acclimate to uh, really, really cold temperatures or really, really hot temperatures, uh, there's lots of benefits to that. I love working out um, in extreme temperatures. I, I, I enjoy the challenge. I like it when it's really, really cold. Although it takes me much longer, uh, you know, to warm up, um, and I also like it when it's really, really hot. Um, although I typically, you know, uh, get tired faster, um, but I do feel good doing either one. You're, you're totally right, Adam. It's, a, it's a, it's like a muscle of the body. Your body's ability to acclimate to temperature, and the more you practice it, the better you get at it. So if you're, uh, uh, you know, if you find yourself to be a heat intolerant person, like yeah. if it gets real hot and you just, uh, you feel like you're just crawling out of your skin. You can actually get your body's ability to acclimate to that, uh, to improve by exposing yourself to more heat. Same is true for cold. And I, I remember, you know, years ago, I, I, I moved to um, Palm Desert. This is a suburb of Palm Springs. And in the summer over there, it just gets blazing hot. Like I'm, I'm 120 degrees uh, is not, uh, you know, a weird, rare temperature during the summer like i'm talking about you i'd wake up at 6 a.m to go to work it's already 90 degrees outside super super hot and so i lived there for about a year and i remember i'd come back to san jose and over here would be you know 89 degrees and everybody would be complaining about how hot it was and i realized like it doesn't feel that hot to me because i had gotten used to my body had learned to acclimate to 115 you know 120 uh, degree weather um, so the, the the main benefit I would say that you get from training at you know high temperatures is you're just training your body's ability to operate at higher temperatures. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's any particular muscle building benefit to it, but from a general health standpoint, I think if you if you get your body better at acclimating to temperature, you're probably overall your body's probably going to adapt better to other types of stimulus. You'll be more resilient. And yeah. I, I have an example too in terms of sports. Like so, I used to I I I, I played in Chicago, and uh, I the the first game that I played there was in St. Louis, and it was like ninety percent humidity and like a hundred degrees, and it was just insane. And I was like completely floored by that. I I, I basically passed out at halftime. Uh, just because my body just had no idea how to react to that. Um, and the next like summer for that, like I went home and I, I trained and I tried to get myself prepared for the next season and I did okay. But then I just decided one year to stay, uh, you know, in Chicago and to, to train there over the summer because they do have a high humidity and heat and it made all the world a difference for me when I came across, you know, other extreme temperatures and, and you know, variables like that uh, within the season. So uh, it made a huge difference. I know a lot of athletes will do this in high altitudes and, you know, they'll train in different environments that emulate where they're going to be competing the most. And it makes a massive difference. Well, the, the, your, your point of, your point of resilience, I think is, is so now Sal, didn't you, sh I thought you shared a study a while back, maybe about a year or two ago, in regards to like why why colds and uh, flu and stuff like that happens in the winter time more often, and it, it didn't have something to do with you know we we te high temperatures and extremely low temperatures are, are stress on the body, and you're more vulnerable when you're stressed like that, and your body has not been acclimated to be able to handle those that swing of temperatures, right? Well, um, and you're okay, more vulnerable, so right? Well, so there's studies that show that uh, that um, actually pretty big, pretty pretty decent studies that show that people who 
regularly use a sauna or regularly, um, you know, do like cold therapy where they'll do like a cold dip or cold showers, they just get sick less often, significantly um, less often. So there's that right there. Um, but as far as, you know, why we get sick more often in the winter, that might, and there's a lot of, you know, speculation as to why that might happen. One of them is that, you know, certain viruses don't like the sun. They don't like UV rays. So they're, they're, they degrade and, and get destroyed faster. The other one is that, it, you know, if low vitamin D levels, we get less sunlight in the oh, winter, right. our, our D levels go down and then our immune systems uh, just aren't. Didn't Wim you know, Hof, didn't Wim Hof do something too? Didn't he do some? I thought he had some study conducted with all his all his people that had gone through all his cold therapy training and how resilient they were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he just he's got some weird stuff. There was one where he they've done some cool. Uh, he's done some cool research. It on was this. Salmonella. They injected. That's like, what it was. Yeah, a, a, a group that actually trained and utilized his methods, and then a group that didn't. And every single person that didn't use his uh, methods uh, got sick. So and, and none of them that uses methods. So I think the the real takeaway is the the ability to be able to train in really high temperatures or really cold temperatures, aside from what it may or may not do from a, a muscle building perspective, what it does for you as far as building a resiliency is extremely valuable and highly encouraged to, for everybody to somehow implement this intermittently into their routine would be smart. Totally. And, and I, you know what this makes me think of? It's, I, I know you guys have had this too. You guys have trained a lot of clients as well, but I'll get, you know, when I would get these new clients that were from like Nebraska or Wisconsin and they're, you know, they're new to California and it would be, you know, like 58 degrees outside, you know, here in, in California, maybe, maybe the sun's out, you know, but it's winter. So it's like 58 degrees. And they'd be coming in their workouts in like tank tops and shorts and like, yeah. oh my God, the weather's so nice. So like, it's 58 degrees, it's freezing. And they're like, hell no, this is beautiful outside. Uh -huh. this, you know, because yeah. they're so used to where they're from, where, you know, that's like a sunny, warm day for them. It was so funny. Next question is from Pamber is Great. I have a family member who started exercising again. She used to do CrossFit, and I think she's a little scared to lift weights because of how intense it was in CrossFit. She now does a lot of cardio, and I'm very proud of her for starting to get healthy again, but would like her to better understand that weightlifting will help her more in the long run. I do not want her to think I'm telling her what she is doing is wrong, though. What about the episode? That, what episode title was that, Doug, that we did that was uh, all about cardio? Remember that? That would be a great one to share with her. Mm -hmm. You remember the title of that? You know what I'm talking about. I don't about. recall it, but I'll look it up. You remember that, Sal, right? Yeah, I do. I think I think sharing some of our episodes for sure is probably good. You've you know, wrote, you've wrote some a, great blogs on this too. I have, and this is really challenging because, um, you know, I, look, I, I'm, I've been in fitness for uh, professionally for over 20 years and longer than that, just on my own. I have family members, close family members who don't exercise, who eat terribly, and um, in the past, I would hammer them. You know, I, I, oh, you yeah. got to read this, do this and do that. doesn't work. It just doesn't work. The only success I've ever had with convincing people close to me to work out or to change their diet is by being the example and then waiting for them to ask me. And they don't always ask me, obviously, mm -hmm. but the ones that do, that's when I seize the opportunity. So they see how well I'm doing. They, you know, that, you know, Sal, I noticed God, you got so much energy. You're always so healthy. Um, uh, you know, I, I think I want to start working out. Can you help me out? Like then I'll, then I'll help them. But in the past, when I've tried to tell them what to do, I've never, I've had zero success with it. I've never had any success trying to convince somebody. It's like you're, you're evangelizing somebody that doesn't want to hear the message. So, um, mm -hmm. I know how challenging this can be. Yeah. And it's tough. Cause I mean, the perception like that, like if you go through a workout, that's like super intense and it seems to be that, I mean, that's what your experience was. There, there's a lot of clients that come in with a preconceived experience of what their workouts used to be. And it takes a long time to uh, basically retrain their mind around that. And I think that it's going to take some time to then reintroduce the proper way to, to lift weights and apply the appropriate amount, the, the, pro, the appropriate dose uh, for intensity and to kind of show like the benefits of lifting weights 
Uh, I think that um, it just needs to be there needs to be an exposure to that. So being around people that are doing it correctly, like having videos accessible, but I mean, it, honestly, it does have to come from her and her own interests in relearning the process and, and maybe just subtly plant seeds of like, Hey, there is another way to do this. That's actually going to benefit your body tremendously. I appreciate that you're working on, you know, cardio and like you're, you're getting your movements and all this. And then just, you know, subtly kind of plant an episode of, video or something, an example out there that kind of shows it doesn't all have to be uh, these grueling, you know, throw up type workouts. Yeah. I, I'd say, you know, uh, the, the, one of the better strategies that I've used um, to talk about the, the benefits of resistance training versus cardio is the metabolism one. Uh, it's, it's just the most effective. It's, it's true. It's a real argument. It really, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a lie. But it's, it tends to be one of the more effective ones, you know, say, you know, to someone, look, um, if you lift weights and you focus on getting stronger, you're going to get your metabolism to burn more calories on its own. So that means, you know, you'll be burning 200 or 300 more calories a day just by being alive. Now, with cardio, uh, you, you have to be doing the cardio to burn more calories. So it does burn a decent amount of calories, but you got to do it all the time to keep it up. And if you, uh, the other thing is your body starts to try to become efficient at that cardio and it starts to learn how to burn less and less calories every time you do it. Um, and one of the adaptations from doing lots of cardio is your body actually starts to pare muscle down and you can find studies that show this, you know, they'll compare people who do cardio plus diet versus just diet versus people who lift weights and diet. And they find that people that cardio and diet actually lose a significant amount of muscle along with the body fat that they lose. And that just means that you have a slower metabolism now later. So to keep the weight off becomes more difficult. It's, it's easier uh, and more beneficial considering, you know, uh, we're, we tend to be sedentary. We have busy schedules and there's a lot of good tasty food all around us to have a faster metabolism. So do you want to have a faster metabolism or do you want to uh, burn all your calories manually and always have to do hard work to, to get them burned? So that, that argument right there, is one of the better ones. But again, uh, you know, she has to show your friend has to show some interest. If you're, if you just hammer them over it, you're probably going to turn them off. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides, resources, and books. They're all totally free. Uh, you can also find Adam, Justin, and myself on Instagram. So you can find Justin at mind pump, Justin, you can find me at mind pump, Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.